Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mike Caputo from Brand of Sacrifice and Desecrate the Faith, and today I'm going to be going over my pedal settings. You can see here I have a Charchi Capito pedal. I've been playing them exclusively since 2019. They're great pedals. They're built really solid. They're physically really heavy, but you can also set them up to feel really light. I personally play a double pedal. I prefer to play a double pedal, frankly, because I'm lazy and I don't want to carry two kick drums with me everywhere. Let's start from the top and work our way down. I'm using the Trick Detonator beaters. They're some of the lightest beaters on the market. I just prefer lighter beaters. They just feel the best to me. I play my beaters fairly high. There is some room to go up higher in the pedals. However, the way I have them set up is to hit more or less right in the middle of a 22 inch kick drum. I also have a Tama beater weight on each of my beaters, but I don't use it as a weight. I actually use it as a memory lock. This way on tour, because I take my pedals apart and put them back together every day, when I put them back together, my beater will be the same height every single time. I actually go one step further and line up the bolt on the beater weight with the bolts on the pedal that hold the beater in. So that way, I know that if all the bolts are lined up, that means that the face of the beater will be hitting straight on with the head and not at any weird angle that may cause the head to break. If we take a look at this leverage adjustment right here, there's four holes. I'll call the one at the front one and the one at the back four. Hole one will give you a looser feeling with more throw and as you move back towards hole four, the pedal will feel stiffer with less of that throw. I use hole three because I feel like it gives me the best balance between not too loose, not too tight, and it allows me to play faster and slower tempos fairly equally without having to force one or the other. The cam is split into two sides, the left side being your beater angle adjustment, and the right side being your footboard height adjustment. A great thing about these pedals is there's markings on basically every spot that can be adjusted. It might be hard to see in this video, but on this black part there's one single line that's used as a reference mark. I have my beater distance at 2.5 from the bottom compared to the reference mark. On the footboard cam there's only one line, which I have at 2.5 when referenced against the beater adjustment. You may look at my pedal and notice that the beater angle is slightly more forward towards the head than most people would play and the footboard angle is slightly lower as well. Most pedals will come stock around here, which is where most people will keep it, and some people take it even further than that. Some people play way back here. The reason I play my beaters a little more forward comes from playing in jeans a lot when I was younger. Since I like to play my beaters fairly high, they would get caught in the leg of my jeans whenever I would play. So to combat this, I just moved the beater slightly more forward so they wouldn't get caught. At the time, I was playing pedals where you couldn't adjust the beater angle and the footboard angle separately. So by bringing the beater angle forward, it also brought the footboard angle lower. That was 15 years ago, and I've just kept it that way ever since. This linkage right here is basically just another way of adjusting your footboard height. If you don't feel like using this cam up top, you can just come over here and use this linkage. It has three holes. I personally use the bottom hole which is the highest setting, which is kind of ironic considering my footboard height actually isn't that high compared to most other people. Swinging around to the other side of the pedal is where you have your spring tension adjustment. Once again, you'll find markings on the housing so you can remember where you have your spring tension set if you or someone else decides to change your settings. I play on maximum spring tension, so it's pretty easy for me to remember, and it just feels the best to me. Down here on the base plate, I'm using foot blaster kick triggers. I love foot blaster triggers, they've made my life so much easier. Acoustic triggers rely on the vibration of the drum head, which can cause a lot of issues. With foot blaster, I've never had any of these issues. I can throw my pedals on any kit I want, and as long as the footboard touches the trigger, my trigger goes off, and that's it. If you'd like to get a pair and try them out, be sure to use code MikeCaputo at checkout for 15% off a pair of foot blaster triggers at footblaster.com. A lot of people have asked me if I changed my pedal settings when I was learning how to do double strokes. And to be honest, I didn't change any of my settings at all. I've been using the same settings for 15 years. I was just too stubborn to get used to new settings, so I just said to myself, I'm going to learn doubles on the exact same settings that I have now. 
So now I'm going to cut to some footage of me playing singles and doubles at various tempos so you can see how these paddles operate. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys found this informative and some of these settings work for you, and I'll catch you guys later.